Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking at the hardest game to platinum. That's nice. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Before we begin the video, we did a top 10 on this topic over on Watch Mojo, so be sure to check it out once you're done. Simply put, it's satisfying to complete games. After a long and arduous battle punctuated with victory poses and shrieks of anger, the end credits finally roll to let players know that they have done well. Back in the days of the NES and the PlayStation 1, sharing one's gaming accomplishments could be pretty annoying, but everything changed with the introduction of Xbox's achievements and game score, Steam achievements, and PlayStation's trophies. Bragging has never been simpler. While completing a game's campaign might result in a neat silver or gold trophy, the real prize is the Platinum. Introduced in Uncharted Drake's Fortune, Platinums have varied greatly in complexity over the years. Elena! Oh god. Elena! Some are little more than participation awards, while others are so challenging that only the most driven of hunters are willing to seek them out. Sports cars, condos, women, money, the beach, opportunity! It did not take long for Rockstar to embrace this new practice and introduce Platinums to Grand Theft Auto, and the franchise loves to make its player base work for their achievements. The first game in the series to include a Platinum was 2008's Grand Theft Auto 4, and it did not hide the fact that the trophy required plenty of time. I'm the janitor because I always clean up. I always win. Get it? While San Andreas and the PS4 version of Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City would take it slightly easier on trophy hunters, the same cannot be said about 2013's fifth entry. Through its single-player campaign and multiplayer modes, Grand Theft Auto 5 has enough content to keep users busy for years. Or, or we could just, like, shop it, you know? Play darts or get our drink on? Strip clubs? Even more than half a decade after its release, GTA V continues to rank among the best-selling games of most weeks. And while it might not take five years to get GTA V's Platinum, it can feel that long. I don't mean nothing by it, man. I just... I know. I messed up. I know, cowboy. It's okay, man. Give me a hug, yeah. So, what makes GTA V's Platinum the hardest ever? While some trophies are annoying to obtain, the challenge is primarily about the sheer volume of content and the grind-heavy nature of some of the achievements. Most of the unlocks do not require an especially high skill level, but they demand commitment. Because of that, it is quite possible for a huge fan to randomly unlock GTA V's Platinum after years of exploring everything Los Santos and its surrounding areas have to offer. <laughs> nice to see the methods haven't changed. Well, we gotta figure out what we're doing somehow. On the other hand, specifically playing GTA V to earn its Platinum will test anybody's patience. The PS3 version of GTA V is also practically impossible to Platinum nowadays, as bounties have been disabled, which is a bit of a problem when the Run Like the Wind trophy revolves around having a bounty. Grand Theft Auto V comes in two forms, the robust story campaign and GTA Online. Although one mode doesn't have much to do with the other, obtaining the Platinum means collecting all of the trophies spread across both the experiences. There are also DLC trophies, but those do not count towards the Platinum. Out of the two modes, the campaign's trophies are more manageable, although that doesn't mean that they're easy. As is often the case with Platinums, it mostly comes down to time. Despite Rockstar prioritizing the multiplayer content after the game's release, GTA V is by no means lacking in stuff for solo players to do. The story should take more than 30 hours to complete, but getting all the single-player trophies will likely balloon the time investment to just below 100 hours. Great. That's nice. Even if the online portion didn't exist, GTA V would still be one of the hardest games to platinum. While plenty can be completed during a thorough playthrough, a second run-through might be needed. GTA is the definitive sandbox franchise, so it makes sense that many trophies reward a do-it-all mentality. 
That means completing tasks such as 50 stunt jumps, flying underneath 50 bridges, and going on 5 rampages, etc, etc. Even after exploring every square inch of Los Santos and Blaine County, players are still only halfway to the Platinum Trophy, and GTA Online ensures the rest of the trip is a bumpy ride. 17 GTA Online trophies contribute to the Platinum, and most should unlock by just embracing the Los Santos lifestyle. It's just that certain trophies, like the one rewarded for reaching rank 100, are not especially accommodating for a life outside of the state of San Andreas. Putting aside glitches in the Matrix, there are often special missions that reward double reputation points to make ranking up a bit quicker. Heists and deathmatches are also a decent source of RP, but reaching level 100 still involves dozens upon dozens of hours of gameplay. Some trophies also revolve around specific modes that are simply not that popular. Backseat Driver, a trophy rewarded for being the co-driver in a winning rally team, would be fine if it was not so annoying to find races besides those of the stunt and transform variety. Joining a racing crew is an option though. The Numero Uno trophy can also be rage-inducing as it involves completing and winning different types of sports matches along with various races and multiplayer modes. On paper, it sounds perfectly doable. Unfortunately, random players who do not quit at the sight of a loss are an endangered species in Los Santos. For these trophies, enlisting the help of friends is necessary, but boosting does not suddenly make leveling up all that faster. There's just no getting around GTA 5's grind. GTA 5 is a great game with a huge map and a seemingly indefinite shelf life. Both the single-player and multiplayer are fully realized experiences that could readily pass as separate games. That's what makes GTA V's Platinum the hardest ever, as it entails committing to two expansive sandbox adventures. By the time the Platinum unlocks, a player should know the streets of Los Santos better than their own neighborhood. What do you guys think? Is GTA V's Platinum worth the investment? Let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the top 10 hardest games to platinum over on Watch Mojo. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.